Hi guys, it's Ashra from WizEdu, and today we're going to be going through compound interest, which is a section in finance. So what exactly is compound interest? Well, compound interest is interest, which is calculated both on the original amount, so the original amount that you've invested, as well as the interest that you've added to this original amount. So you can already see there's a stark difference between compound interest and simple interest, which we did previously. In simple interest, we were only calculating interest on the original amount we put in, whereas now we're told in compound interest, we're going to be calculating interest on this original amount, so that's the same, but we'll also be calculating interest on the accumulated interest that we've added over the years. So just to visualize this, let's take an example. Let's take the same 1,000 Rand um, that we invested in this previous example with simple interest and take the same interest rate at 10%. However, this time, instead of using simple interest, we'll say that the interest is compounded per annum. So every year we'll compound the interest. So how will this look differently from simple interest? So for our first year to calculate our bank balance, we can use the same formula we had for simple interest because we don't have any interest before this. 1,000 is our original amount and we don't have any other interest. So for our first year, our calculation is going to be 1,000 into 1 plus 10% times 1. So I'm just going to keep that 1 plus 10% because the 1 uh, doesn't make a tangible difference. So after one year, we're going to have 1,100 rand, okay, which is the same that we had for simple interest. It's the same balance. But now the difference arises in year two. So we could go and use our same simple interest formula, which is A equals P into 1 plus IN to calculate our value for year two. But just remember now, we're going to be using this as our present value for year two because we're going to be calculating interest on interest. So our original amount is going to include the 100 Rand we earned in year one. So we're also going to earn interest on that 100 in year two. So in year two, we'd say that our P, or our original amount, would be the 1,000 into 1 plus 10% we earned in year one. So this is the amount from year one that we earned. And we're going to multiply that then by 1 plus 10% because that's this bracket here, or this part of the equation. So this part, 1,000 into 1 plus 10% represents our P for year two. And that's going to bring our bank balance to 1,210 Rand for year two, which is 10 Rand more than if it was with simple interest. Because remember, with our simple interest, we got 1,200 Rand in our bank account after two years. Here we have an additional 10 rands, that's because we earned 10% on that 100 rand. So 10% of 100 is 10 rand. So that 100 rand we earned in year one is interest. We earned 10% on that, and that took our balance 10 rands more than if it was simple interest. So after year three, we treat the entire amount of year two as our principal or original amount. So that would then be 1,000 into 1 plus 10% to the power 2. Because you can see we have this term over here and this term over here, and they're the same. They're being multiplied. So I can just go ahead and um, multiply them together and square them to make the equation a bit more concise. And that's going to be our entire p-value for year 3. And that's also going to be multiplied by 1 plus 10% because that's the rest of our equation over here. And that's then going to bring our bank balance in year three to 1,331 Rand. And this, as it, obviously, as you can see, is, is 31 Rand higher than the 1,300 Rand we earned when we were using simple interest. So you can see our money is getting gradually and gradually larger than it would have um, had we used simple interest instead. So if we wanted to come up with a formula so we could easily calculate our bank balance after a certain number of years, what would we do or what formula would we use? Well, you can see an interesting pattern between year one, year two, and year three. 
we always have that 1,000 Rand there in the beginning, right? And we always have this term 1 plus 10%. It's just being multiplied more and more as the years progress. So after three years, we have 2 plus 1. So we have three of them. In year 2, we have 1 there and 1 there. So we have two of these 1 plus 10%. And in year 1, we have 1. So after n years, we'd have 1,000, right? Because we always have that 1,000 into 1 plus 10% to the power n. Because n number of years, we'd have n number of those 1 plus 10%. So that's our easy way that we can use to calculate our bank balance after n number of years. And if we wanted to use this for any value, any investment, any interest rate, we could simply substitute that 1,000 with p, our original or principal amount, have that multiplied by 1 plus i, which is our interest rate, to the power n, our number of periods. And this is going to be our formula for compound interest. So our bank balance after n number of years would then be p into 1 plus i to the n, where p represents our principal amount, i is our interest rate as a percentage, and n is our number of time periods. And just as a note, the 1,000 Rand we initially invested is invested once only, so we aren't dealing with an annuity where we put in a thousand rand each year. And also note that 10% is earned on the previous year's amount, which includes both the original amount we invested as well as the interest earned from all the previous years. And all of this accumulates, so our balance becomes exponentially larger and larger, as we'll see just now. So, as I showed you guys over here, we earn interest on interest. Um, so let's take a look at our formula. So the formula we've just derived for compound interest is A equals P into 1 plus I to the power N. So N isn't inside the bracket anymore. It's now an exponent. And that represents the exponential growth of money with compound interest. So A is still our accumulated or final amount. P is still our principal or original amount. We still have our 1, i is our interest rate as a fraction, and n is our number of time periods or years. So then with compound interest, how would you go about calculating the amount of interest that you've earned? So how much your money is grown by? Well, you'd use this formula here, which I also used with simple interest, but this formula, you have to calculate your accumulated interest first to use it. With simple interest, we had our formula I equals PIM, where you could just go ahead and calculate your total interest without having to calculate anything first. With compound interest, you have to calculate your A value first, then you subtract it from your principal amount to find the difference between the two, and that difference would be the uh, amount your money has grown by. So you can see it's slightly a uh, longer route to calculate your interest than simple interest. And just a note here that you can also use the variable f in place of a, where f represents future value. It's just a different notation, and some of you might be more familiar with f than a. And like we did with the last time, uh, we can graphically represent our compound interest formula. And you can see that it's no more a straight line graph like we had with simple interest. You can see we have a slight curve here, which represents the exponential growth of our money. And it shows that over time, we aren't adding a constant amount every year. So you saw with simple interest, we were just adding 100 Rand every year, 100, 100. But with compound interest, we're adding more than that. In our first year, we added 100, right? But in our second year, we added 110 Rand. And in our third year, we added 121 Rand. So you can see that these are gradually going up because the difference between that and that was 10 and that and that was 11. So slowly but surely, the difference between the amounts we're adding on each year is rising, and that's eventually going to result in it taking a much steeper curve. So you can see it becomes exponential. Our growth of our money is exponential, which basically means that we're adding interest to interest, which is going to result in us getting a whole lot of money. So this is the main benefit of compound interest. You can really grow your money really well if you use compound interest 
and that's because of the changing and ever increasing gradient that we have with compound interest. So let's go ahead and do a similar example we had with simple interest and try and compare that to the amount Riaz would have earned if he invested his, his 500 rand that he got for his birthday um, in simple interest and we'll compare it now with compound interest. So we have the same 7%, we have the same 500 rand, okay? The only difference is instead of simple interest, we now have compound interest and we'll work with the same five year time period. So we know our formula for compound interest is A equals P into one plus I, and now it's all to the power N. So that's going to be 500 Rand into one plus our 7% to the power of five years. And that's going to give us a bank balance at the end of five years, 701 Rand and 28 cents. So if you compare that with the 675 Rand he earned, with simple interest, you can see he's made 26 Rand and 28 cents more with compound interest. So while that might not seem like a big amount to you guys, over time, this does grow at a rapid rate exponentially. And if you leave your money in for long enough, the difference between compound interest and simple interest is tangible. Um, and for our second part of the question, earn, uh, determine how much interest he has earned in the five years. So we'll use the formula I equals A minus P. So we'll find the difference between the accumulated amount and the principal amount. So this difference would be 701.28 minus 500, which is 201 rand, 28 cents. So that's the amount of interest he would have earned over the five years, which is much greater than the 175 he earned with simple interest. So you can see the difference here. So I just want to compare compound interest and simple interest. So we had two examples where we invested a thousand Rand at 10% per annum. And I just want to compare how those look over the four year time period. So with our simple interest, you can see we added a hundred Rand constantly each year. So after four years, we had 1,400 Rand. But with compound interest, the amount we were adding each year was ever increasing. In our first, after one year, we added 110 Rand, right? That's in our second year, we added 110 Rand. In our third year, we added 121 Rand. And then in our fourth year, we added 133 Rand and 10 cents. So you can see these are all 10% of the previous year's figure. So we're always working with the previous year's amount, and that includes the interest that's been earned up until that point. So with simple interest, we discovered we were dealing with a straight line increase, whereas with compound interest, we have an exponential increase in our money. And then with simple interest, remember interest is only earned on the principal amounts, so on the original amount. Whereas with compound interest, we are able to earn interest on interest. And that's what allows us to have that exponential growth. And finally, simple interest, we have a smaller growth because you can see we have 1,400 here as opposed to greater growth with compound interest. We had 1,464 and 10 cents over four years with compound. So that's a bit of a difference. So we have more growth with compound interest. And if we had to look at our equations, those are also different. With simple interest, we have our N here, which stays in the brackets. And with compound interest, the N is an exponent. So it's indicative of our exponential growth. And simple interest, it's easy to calculate the total interest earned. We just merely say P times I times N. Whereas with compound interest, you have to calculate A first, and then you can calculate your I. With simple interest, you can still use the formula I equals A minus P. But why would you want to do that when you have to calculate A first? Um, you should just use the formula I equals PIN. It's much quicker. You don't have to calculate A first. And just if we look at a difference between the graphs of simple and compound interest, with simple interest, we saw that we had a straight line graph because we had a constant increase every year. So our gradient M was constant. Whereas with compound interest, we have this curve here 
which shows that the amount we're adding every year is ever increasing, resulting in this curved or exponential growth. So you can see even visually there are a difference between the graphs of simple and compound interest. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope this explains compound interest pretty well, and you've also grasped the difference between compound and simple interest. Thanks. Oh,